So anyways, that is the end of Halloween 5. Jim, your thoughts? Uh, this movie felt like a joke. <laughs> like a like a like a little jokey movie i don't i don't know it didn't feel like a halloween movie it was just a rehash as we've already said of all the other halloween movies combined which makes it feel like a halloween film because that's what most of them are well, <laughs> exactly yeah and i mean halloween uh, 3 and there, and there are plenty plenty of reasons to not like halloween 3 but 12 13 movies into the series however many movies we are Aren't you so glad it does something different? Like, I'll even say yeah. that about Halloween Ends. I didn't really like Halloween Ends that much, but I'm so freaking glad they did something different. I mean, I didn't really care much for it, but it was mm-hmm. finally something new. Well, you know, it's funny that uh, in this movie, they took a fantastic little actress and made her mute for three quarters of the movie and just yeah. m- made her have seizures. Mute, but emotive still. Yeah, yeah but, I, not... but I think... I think Donald she 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 does more acting in this movie than Jamie Lee Curtis in Halloween too. Who's just hopped up on painkillers and just <laughs> wants to sleep, you know. Yeah, but I think Mr. Donald and wearing Loomis a wig does a does a does a better job just because it's so much fun to watch on screen. Yes, this is this is a wacky, crazy performance. Overacting, you got to appreciate it. It's great. The 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 the. <laughs> This is my second favorite Die. Dr. Loomis. This is this is you know I he he's great in the first one just like as a character and here he's a terrible character which is why he's amazing. It's great. <laughs> like this is there's always been like a fan theory around that like maybe Michael wasn't actually crazy. He just had the world's worst psychiatrist who basically <laughs> made him crazy. And this film that. lends that credence. It yeah. really does. Yeah, yeah, I think <laughs> Like if this if this is how if 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 this is how Dr. Loomis was with like a seven year old Michael Myers, like oh I could kind of see it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if he's hauling a seven year old Michael Myers around saying, Take him, take him. Yeah, you know, it's just a shame that this movie is pretty boring. Like there's nothing super exciting that happens. Definitely the best kill, in my opinion, is the gardening clause, the gardening implement in the head there. Yeah, that's good. I I like the um the cop the hanging. cop getting hanged. Yeah. I thought that was something different too. Yeah, you know, yeah, it was, and that's kind of neat. I mean, like for me, my favorite part of this movie was when Michael pretends to be Michael. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. I really like Cookie that. Woman. <laughs> Cookie Woman. That's my yeah. favorite part but, of like, the movie. I the, love that specifically bit. the Cookie Woman line delivery. Yeah. <laughs> But like that that like portion is so tense and also so much fun and uh, and so stupid too well, yeah exactly i mean it is yeah but everything else just is boring and then all that like the kittens in the barn thing that's like a 10 like it feels like a 30 minute scene but i'm sure it's like a 10 minute scene and you're yeah like, i don't know what? what it is about that barn stuff it feels like it should work a lot better because that's classic slasher setup that's what i thought yeah and it just doesn't i don't know how it just feels falls flat and i'm not really sure why it's almost like they had come up with scenarios or like some death scenarios so like okay yeah well we're gonna have somebody stabbed in a barn by a pitchfork and somebody else killed by some other kind of farming tool but now how do we get there oh well what if somebody finds some kittens next to this party that's happening on a farm or somebody's bungalow and <laughs> and they or, wander in there or you could have the party outside at the farm like any farm party would be and then a couple people just wander into the barn exactly. they don't need to find exactly. kittens exactly they don't need to play pranks on cops no, they don't no. need to play pranks on each other 90 seconds after they played pranks on cops yeah and on top of that like for the most part this movie was pretty lax on the gore and even even the deaths, like we, there are so many. That they were they are, but I don't know how much of that is. You you blame the filmmakers for that because I'll say like the the team working on the effects. It's K K N B. So that's uh, Kurtzman, Robert Kurtzman, Howard Berger, and Greg Nicotero. They're like as skilled as anybody in the gore effects industry. But I would say just in general, you know, it ebbs and flows. But I would say in the late 80s, the MPAA cracked down on gore more than at other periods in time. Because the late 80s, Friday the 13th movies, are a lot less violent than the early ones. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, which comes out in 1990, Mm. 
like every bit of gore in that movie is like cut out and it's just the lamest movie in the world because of that so yeah i i I, so that could be a factor i don't know any specifics about if halloween 5 had issues with that but it would not surprise me at all yeah my biggest takeaway from this movie is that i don't think i like michael myers that much as a this is what I was saying. As an evil villain. This is the last time we talked about Michael Myers. You yeah, I've really changed him my tune. I've really as changed best my tune. villain in our season three awards recap, best villain for Halloween four, and I said <laughs> Michael sucks. There's <laughs> one movie in which he works, and I stand by that. I think he's he's a boring killer. And listen, as far as like boring killers who just do the same shit every movie go, he is not Jason. There's an artistry to Jason's kills. Michael just does whatever. Yeah, well, and then he cr- drives in a car, and somehow that makes him less threatening <laughs> when he's chasing after people in a car. Yeah, yeah, I like the idea that he's so bad at chasing people in a car that he d- drives his car into a tree. He's like, ah, fuck, dude. <laughs> he was drinking. Yeah, yeah. He couldn't see out of that mask. Also, I so there was one thing earlier when he was wearing like the Rondo Hatton mask, which is Mikey's mask. There was a scene where he took it off. And I really, really was hoping the Michael Myers mask was on underneath it. But oh, it wasn't. yeah, that's He, like, right, pulled yeah. it up from, like, underneath the seat. But I, it would have been so funny if he just had that mask on <laughs> underneath the other mask. <laughs> Missed opportunity. You'll put that stupid, goofy sound effects in with the cops, which you won't do that with Michael Myers? Come on. Yeah. Well, what did you think? What's your opinion? Same thing, same, same sort of thing? Pretty much. I mean, it's a lame movie. <laughs> There's a few little mild touches of it. These are all like small things, but there's a few mild touches where it's like, oh, I kind of appreciate that. There's a couple little moments with Rachel where you see Michael in the background in the house Mm -hmm. and they don't do like a musical sting to like let you know that he's there. You just kind of have to be watching the screen and you'll see him. Yeah. There's a few moments like that that are kind of nice and, and a bit more reminiscent of the first one than a lot of the sequels. And then most of the other stuff I like is the schlocky elements, like the uh, Donald Pleasant's performance. It's just we've done this so many times at this point. You you need to give us something memorable, even if it, even if it's not a big story shakeup. Because the big the thing that they bring here is the telepathic link, which you know whatever. But like I I just I will always compare these to the Friday the Thirteenth movies. But a lot of the weaker Friday the Thirteenth movies, they'll at least give you memorable moments. If it's just like a kill that really stands out or like a gore effect or something. Or even if it's just something dumber. If it's Crispin Glover dancing. Yeah. You know, yeah. something just weird. I um, think... And this movie just doesn't really have a lot to offer there other than the crazy Donald Pleasance performance, which is wonderful. I think as this podcast goes on, I'm, I'm learning that I'm agreeing with you wholeheartedly about what you just said about the worst Friday the 13th being kind of better than the... <laughs> Definitely better than a lot of the Halloween movies. I just think they're more entertaining. Yeah, yeah, they are. I don't, I don't know what it is. It's yeah, it's, it's a certain amount of it comes down to personal preference, obviously. Yeah, but like you know, when you're watching like a horror movie, you don't want to be checking your phone while you're watching a movie. And like, I'm watching this for a podcast, and I'm like looking down at my phone. I'm like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> what else is going on in the world of Facebook? You know? Oh, or X, <laughs> formerly Twitter. <laughs> Which you're not on, and you're still checking that over watching the movie. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> it's not good. It's not completely un. It's not unwatchable. It's it's not even the the worst of the series. I think I think you'd agree it's the worst up to this point. Mm-hmm. This is not the worst in the series, but that's not to say it's really all that worth watching. Honestly, like I I I I have this thing where I've talked about this. I've written about this for Grandma Sophia's Cookies blog, but. Certain series, you can get the full experience of the series, like all that's great that that series has to offer by watching one movie in the series, or maybe two. The Halloween series, you can honestly just watch the first one. The, yeah. the rest, the other sequels do not add anything to it, well, except for Halloween 3, which is its own unique thing, and it's not really a sequel, but Halloween 2 doesn't add anything. It adds more than this. It comes closer to adding something than Halloween 5 does, but, yeah, you know. Yeah, I agree. 